الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين أما بعد so we have uh, what is going to be our last Fajr class I say Fajr because wherever you are in the world it could be uh, obviously a different time for yourselves but for me right here it's it's our Fajr time so this will be the last of the Fajr classes uh, inshallah ta'ala and that is because of the 10 days so as the last 10 days of Ramadan come in and more people are awake throughout the whole night it's kind of uh, unreasonable to expect someone to stay up all night and then expect them also to and you stay up for three more or four more hours after Fajr. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go for an afternoon all the way until Maghrib uh, session. Now, the UK times are changing tomorrow. So we are entering British summertime. And so that means that there will be a change in the, in the class time. So we're going to go for, uh, we're going to start with 3 p.m. British summertime. Um, you can see it on YouTube. If you want to know where that is, where you are, you can just check the timing on YouTube. Uh, and it'll be like a single class that will just continue until Maghrib. Um, but we may make it a bit earlier if we find that's not long enough to, to do it. We might have to make it one hour earlier than that as well. Depends on whether it's long enough for us to manage because we will have to try it out and see. If it's not long enough, what we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, have to uh, make it earlier. Or we could make like the occasional one earlier. If we're late, running late, running behind, we can make like one of them, you know, one or two sessions earlier. But generally speaking, that's what we're going to start with. We're going to try 3 p.m. British summer time, which is 6 p.m. Dubai time. And yeah, the rest of it, you can figure out for yourselves, inshallah ta'ala. Naam, ya Abdurrahman, tafaddal. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen. Sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma fillina wa al-shaykhina wa al-mustami'in wa al-jami'in al-muslimin. Wa rahmatika ya arhamal rahimin. Ba'da a'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim. Qala Allahu ta'ala. Walamma balaga ashuddahu wa stawa ataynahu hukman wa ilma. وَكَذَلِكَ نَجَزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And when he attained his full strength and was mentally mature, we bestowed upon him judgment and knowledge, and thus and so do we reward those of good. I don't know about mentally mature being maybe uh, a little bit too specific here. I, I think mature would have been enough. Um, and when he reached full strength and maturity, that would have been enough. We bestowed upon him judgment and knowledge. Um, uh, and this doesn't necessarily have to be if it refers to prophethood, which is the, what it seems to be. It doesn't seem that that is in order for the next ayah because the prophethood of Musa, it happened when Musa was called at the uh, Tua, uh, the sacred valley of Tua. So it's not any here. It doesn't necessarily mean that his prophethood came first and then he uh, killed a man. Rather, when he, he killed a man before his prophethood. And that's why there's no mention of the word thumma or the word fat here that indicates that it happened afterwards. وَدَخَلَ الْمَدِينَةَ عَلَى حِينَ غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا فَوَجَدَ فِيهَا على حين نحين ودخل المدينة على حين غفلة من أهلها فوجد فيها رجلين يقتتلان هذا من شيعته وهذا من عدوه فاستغاثه الذي من شيعته على الذي من عدوه فوكزه موسى فقضى عليه قال هذا من عمل الشيطان إنه عدو مضل مبين And he entered the city at a time of inattention. In by its people, and found therein two men fighting. 
one from his faction and one from his enemy. And the one from his faction called for help to him against the one from his enemy. So Musa struck him and intentionally killed him. Musa said, this is from the work of shaitan. Indeed, he is a manifest misleading enemy. Now, uh, he found two men fighting, one of them from his people. And one of them was a Coptic Egyptian any from the any the 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 uh, the people uh, any under the authority of Fir'aun. For the one from his people called him for help. And Musa struck the other one, the Copt. He struck him unintentionally, and he didn't intend to kill him. He only intended to repel his any transgression. And then Musa mentioned that this is from the shaitan. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَغَفَرَ لَهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ He said, My Lord, indeed I have wronged myself, so forgive me. And he forgave me. He forgave him. Indeed, he is the forgiving and the merciful. Sa'di mentions a benefit, by the way. He said, this ayah shows that by the time of the ayah, I mean the previous ayah, وَدَخَلَ uh, الْمَدِينَةِ عَلَى حِينِ غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنِي حِينَ غَفْلَةٍ عَلَى حِينِ غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا It means that at the time when the people were sleeping at noon, you know the qaylula, the time of the people going resting. Like in the Saudi mentioned a benefit here. He said uh, in the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِيعَتِهِ the one from his people, in Bani Israel, sought his help. That shows that by that time, it was known that Musa was from Bani Israel. And at that point, because it was hidden in, in childhood, and where did he come from? Who is he? Like, and by that time, it was known that he was from Bani Israel. And all his people and the people of Fir'aun, they knew that he was from Bani Israel. As for the next ayah, and he called upon Allah Azza wa Jal, Inni zalamtu nafsi, I've, I have wronged my soul. Fa'afir li fa'afar ala. So forgive me, so he forgave him. And that just shows yani, the, the, the prophets rushed to tawbah and istighfar. Even though those prophets, alayhim salatu wasalam, in here, Musa, it was unintentional. It was qatlu khata. Yani, it was not qatl uh, amd or shibh amd. It was not murder or manslaughter. It was a mistake. It was something he didn't intend. Uh, like in how they rushed to Tawbah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted it from him. And that shows that the sins of the Prophet or the Prophets, alayhim salatu wasalam, first of all, we said the Prophets do not do major sins. And they do not do anything major or minor which would take away from their prophethood. Like, for example, doubts over their honesty, or reliability, trustworthiness, um, whether they fulfill their promises or not. And the third thing is, they, if a prophet does a minor sin, they do it unintentionally. They don't intend to do it. But what they do is they did it by, by accident and they got something wrong or they fell into a mistake or they didn't realize it was wrong um, or they didn't intend it. That's the nature of the Prophet alayhim salatu was salam. قَالَ رَبِّ بِمَا أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ فَلَنْ أَكُونَ ظَهِيرًا لِلْمُجْرِمِينَ He said, my Lord, for the favor you bestowed upon me, I will never be an assistant to the criminals. Now, I mean, that's from the, the sincere tawbah that a person, any, a person, when they have made tawbah to Allah, after that, فَمَنْ تَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَأَصْلَحْ They correct themselves and they intend never to do it again. And I will never help someone to do a sin. فَأَصْبَحَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي اسْتَنْصَرَهُ بِالْأَمْسِ يَسْتَصْرِخُهُ قَالَ لَهُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّكَ لَغَوِيٌّ مُّبِينٌ And he became inside the city fearful and anticipating exposure. 
when suddenly the one who sought his help the previous day cried out to him. Once again, Musa said to him, Indeed, you are an evident, persistent deviator. And he became fearful. Do the people of Fir'aun know what happened or not? And he has the matter reached Fir'aun or it hasn't reached Fir'aun. And he was anticipating. And he watching out for himself. And, you, and this is from uh, and he, also Fir'al al-Asbab. And he doing the actions. And he was cautious, looking out for himself, expecting at any moment that the people of Fir'aun would have found out what, what happened. When suddenly the one who sought his help the day before, any from uh, Bani Israel, cried out to him once again. Musa, and he said, and he effectively, you're, you're a troublemaker. And it's clear that you are actually yourself, you, you are actually the one who is causing the trouble. فلما أن أراد أن يبطش بالذي هو عدو لهما قال يا موسى قال يا موسى أتريد أن تقتلني كما قتلت نفسا بالأمس إن تريد إلا أن تكون جبارا في الأرض وما تريد أن تكون من المصلحين. And when he wanted to strike the one who was an enemy to both of them, he said, O oh Musa, do you intend to kill me as you killed someone yesterday? You only want to be a tyrant in the land and do not want to be of the amenders. So there's uh, two views with regard to, who, again, there's, there's the difference of opinion about who said what here. So one of the views is that this was said by another copt. And, he, and that that copt, uh, he said, and he, there was a, that man was fighting with another copt, and the copt said, O oh, Musa, do you intend to kill me as you killed someone yesterday? And another view is that he said that he wanted to hit the troublemaker from Bani Israel. So he went to hit the troublemaker and the troublemaker said to him, O oh Musa, do you intend to kill me as you killed someone yesterday? And you only want to be a tyrant in the land and not from those people who do right. And you can see the, 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 the uh, any very, very bad manners and arrogance and so on. But there's, there's a very strong view that the person who said that was the person from Bani Israel. And he realized that he's the troublemaker. He's getting into fights with the Copts just for, you know, for the sake of it or without right. And he, you know, he's the one who instigated the events that happened the day before or the days before. And so Musa wanted to hit him instead. And so he said, oh Musa, do you want to hit me? When? Yani, you, do you want to kill me like you killed a man yesterday? Yeah, because he was a troublemaker. And there's a view that it was another cop who said it. And that shows that the, the news had already got out. Because Musa thought nobody knew. He was expecting people to find out. But until then, he thought that nobody knew what happened. وجاء رجل من أقصى المدينة يسعى قال يا موسى قال يا موسى إن الملأ يأتمرون بك ليقتول قال يا موسى إن الملأ يأتمرون بك ليقتلوك فاخرج إني لك من الناصحين And a man came from the father's end of the city, running. He said, O oh Musa, indeed the eminent ones are conferring over you, intending to kill you, so leave the city. Indeed, I am to you of the sincere advisors. And what Musa was scared of came true. That they found out about the killing and they had any the the mela, the, the court of Fir'aun had decided that Musa needed to be killed. Fakharajaminha 
قال رب نجني من القوم الظالمين so he left it fearful and anticipating apprehension he said my lord save me from the wrongdoing people and he, and he, the yatarqab and he was in a state of extreme caution expecting that at any time he could be discovered so that again shows fi'l asbab and he doing even though allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you but you're doing what needs to be done hiding concealing yourself and it also shows that being scared does not la yunafi tawhid it doesn't con- contradict tawhid وَلَمَّا تَوَجَّهَتْ الْقَاءَ مَدْيَنَ قَالَ عَسَى رَبِّي قَالَ عَسَى رَبِّي أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ And when he directed himself toward Madian, he said, perhaps my Lord will guide me to the sound way. وَلَمَّا وَرَدَ مَاءَ مَدْيَنَ وَجَدَ عَلَيْهِ أُمَّةً مِنَ النَّاسِ يَسْقُونَ وَجَدَ وَلَمَّا وَرَدَ مَاءَ مَدْيَنَ وَجَدَ عَلَيْهِ أُمَّةً مِنَ النَّاسِ يَسْقُونَ وَوَجَدَ مِنْ دُونِهِمْ امْرَأَتَيْنِ تَذُودَانِ قال ما خطبكما قالت لا نسقي حتى يصدر الرعاء وابونا شيخ كبير and when he came to the water of madian he found there a crowd of people watering their flocks and he found aside from them two women holding back their flocks he said what is your circumstance they said We do not want. We do not want what we do. We do not want. Uh, no, not we do not want. water. Ah, no. We do not water. Ah. We do not water until the shepherds dispatch their flocks. And our father is an old man. Um, and he came to Median. Uh, there is a view, and it, like I said, there is a view that uh, uh, that uh, Sheikh Al Kabir is Shuaib. Like, and it doesn't, and it doesn't seem to be, uh, doesn't seem to be correct. Yani. Uh, but Madian is Mad- is the Madian of Madian is the Madian that Shuaib was sent to, and uh, he saw the shepherds, all of them with their flocks, dr- yani, are drinking the water, and two women that are holding theirs back. They can't they can't go, and they said, and he said, what is the matter with the two of you? They said we can't go to the, yani, to the watering hole, while the men are there. And they, first of all, and it's not it's not appropriate. They had they were women of haya of shyness, and also they, the men are are strong. And the men push people out of the way. Everyone is jostling around the water. There's no way for them to get inside. And they mentioned the reason that they are here is that because their father is an old man. فَسَقَى لَهُمَا ثُمَّ تَوَلَّى إِلَى الظِّلِّ فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٌ So he watered their flocks for them. Then he went back to the shade and said, My Lord, Indeed, I am for whatever good you would send down to me in need. And yani Musa, as a, yani an act of kindness and charity, he he was very strong, and yani, so he took their flocks, and he was able to push his way in among the men, and for the animals to drink their water and to give them back to the women. And uh, this is from the. Uh, in the excellent adab of the anbiya and it's also from the statement of allah azawajal hal jazaa'u al-ihsani illa al-ihsan when you do ihsan to someone ihsan will be done to you and the dua that musa makes is from the most comprehensive uh, dua general ad'iyah that a person makes in need of allah azawajal yani my lord whatever you have for me i'm in desperate need 
any whatever it is, and that doesn't have to be said in desperate need. Yani that Musa, he was not at that moment in a in a state of uh, that he's about to die or that he's any. I am in need of you all the time, oh Allah, and nothing good comes to me except what you give me. And the implication here, there's not a question, there's not an asking, but the implication is, give me something that will be good for me in the situation that I'm in. For this is a very comprehensive du'a. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. I'm in need of the good that you send down to me. And that's, as I said, it's not when you are in a state of desperate need, that's all the time you're in need of what Allah sends down to you from good. فجاءته إحداهما تمشي على استحياء قالت إن أبي يدعوك ليجزيك أجر ما سقيت لنا فلما جاءه وقص عليه القصص قال لا تخف نَجَوْتَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Then one of the two women came to him walking with shyness. She said, Indeed my father invites you that he may reward you for having watered for us. So when he came to him and related to him the story, he said, Fear not, you have escaped from the wrongdoing people. Um, as we said, there's no strong evidence that it was Shu'aib. Uh, it seems the timing doesn't, doesn't match. Like in... There's, he was a righteous man and he followed excellent etiquettes that if someone does good for you, you should thank them for the good they've done. So he sent one of the girls and she was walking in shyness. And that shows yani, that he, he brought his, his children up well. He, and his shyness is always good for men and women. The Prophet ﷺ saw a man admonishing his brother for being too shy. The Prophet ﷺ said, Da'ah, leave him alone. فَإِنَّ الْحَيَاءَ خَيْرٌ كُلُّ Every single thing about shyness is good. And in the hadith of the branches of Iman, the Prophet ﷺ said, the highest is La ilaha illallah, the lowest is removing something from the harmful from the road, and shyness is a branch from the branches of Iman. But she was walking shy, shyly or shyfully. She said, my father invites you to reward you for what you did for us. And so when he came to him and related to him the story, he said, fear not, you've escaped the wrongdoing people. For in Sahih International, the footnote says that it's Prophet Shu'aib. Some of them said it. Yani they, they, some of them said it. Yani that it was Prophet Shu'aib. Like, and it needs, yani it needs a, a delil. And there's certain things and yani it doesn't really help. So first of all, that the man is an old man. Um, living in Madian. Like in Shu'aib, his people were destroyed. anhum. He turned away from them and, and left them. فَهَلْ يُتَصَوَّرْ That he left his people, get destroyed, and then came back to live in Madian until he became a very, very old man. It's, it's, not, it's not impossible, but it's, and the timing also. Remember, Shu'aib came, we heard from the time, and he, close to the time of the people of, uh, and the people of Lut, the people of Ibrahim. Uh, so it, it, it's pro it seems to me, wallahi, yani, I heard more than one of the, the scholars say that it's problematic. Yani, it's mushkil that it was Shu'aib and it's better to leave it, yani, to, to leave it without. It's, it's not impossible that he could have lived for a very, very long time. Allah could have, yani, for example, Nuh lived 950 years. And he could have lived for a very, very long time. Like, and there's no dalil that it was him. And Allah doesn't tell us it was him. And there's no, to the best of my knowledge in the sunnah, any specific mention that it was him. But it's better to leave it as an old righteous man. Um, and he wants to reward it. So when, he, when Musa told him what happened, he said, don't be scared. You have escaped the wrongdoing people. 
قالت إحداهما يا أبت استأجر إن خير من استأجرت القوي الأمين One of the women said, women said Oh my father, hire him Indeed the best one you can hire is the strong and the trustworthy And that's a principle and it's, uh, From the many benefits of the Quran Subhanallah, and the infinite any benefits and sometimes in a story of someone that says something, there is a principle that you can apply in your life. The best worker you can ever have is Al-Qawi Al-Amin, the one who is strong and he's capable of doing the job and the one who's trustworthy. Because he joins between two things, capability to do the work and being trustworthy. Now, for Having someone who is trustworthy is good, but not capable to do the work is, is difficult. Having someone who is strong but not trustworthy is worse. Like to have someone who is strong and capable and trustworthy, this is the best person that you can employ. قال إني أريد أن أنكحك إحدى بنتي هاتين على أن تأجرني ثماني حجاج فإن أتممت عشرا فمن عندك وما أريد أن أشق عليك ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصالحين. He said, indeed, I wish to wed you. Uh, wed you. Mm. I wish to wed you, one of these, my two daughters, on the condition that you serve me for eight years. If you complete ten, it will be as a favor from you, and I do not wish to put you in difficulty. You will find me, if Allah wills, from among the righteous. قال ذلك بيني وبينك أيما الأجلين أيما الأجلين أيما الأجلين قضيت فلا عدوان علي والله على ما نقول وكيل موسى said that is established between me and you whichever of the two terms I complete there is no justice to me and Allah, of what, he's, of what we say, is his witness. Naam. So he married one of the two women. And the condition of it was that he worked for eight to ten years. And it was established between them that eight is the minimum term. And if you work for me for ten years, then this is a favor from you. And I would like you to do ten, but eight is the minimum. After eight, you fulfilled your... Condition to me. فلما قضى موسى الأجل وسار بأهله آنس من جانب الطور نارا قال لأهلهم كثوا قال لأهلهم كثوا إني آنست نارا لعلي لعلي آتيكم منها بخبر أو جذوة من النار لعلكم تصطلون. And when Musa had completed the term and was traveling with his family, he perceived from the direction of the mount a fire. He said to his family, Stay here. Indeed, I have perceived a fire. Perhaps I will bring you from there some information or burning wood from the fire that you may warm yourselves. Which of the two terms did Musa complete? Ten, why? Because, he's, because prophets always, always fulfill. In the Prophet was asked, there's a hadith. He was asked, one of the Sahaba asked him, which of the two terms, which of the two terms did he complete? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told that the Prophets always yeah, and he fulfill, and he, they fulfill their, their oaths to the maximum extent that it can be fulfilled. But from his adab and from his, yeah, and he, uh, the excellent character that Allah Azza wa Jal gave him, Musa completed 
10 years. And then he traveled with his family. They became lost in the dark. And we mentioned the, the story, any, this part of the story before. فلما أتاها نودي من فلما أتاها نودي من شاطئ الوادي الأيمن في البقعة المباركة من الشجرة أي موسى إني إني أنا الله رب العالمين. But when he came to it. He was called from the right side of the valley in a blessed spot from the tree. O oh Musa, indeed I am Allah, Lord of the worlds. And he, the tree was within the fire. For he came across a, an extremely unusual sight, which is that in he, the right side of the valley, by the way, uh, here, uh, the, the right side, also the word al ayman is the blessed side. In the word uh, Yameen means right hand side and it also means the blessed side. Is that he came across the tree, you know, the, the tree burning inside of the, the fire, like not being eaten up by the fire. And when he came to it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him. Uh, his Lord spoke to him directly. And these two ayat, وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Both of them, when you put them together, they show that it's impossible for this speech to be metaphorical. What do we mean by metaphorical? It's, it's impossible that this speech was an inspiration, uh, you know, like just a feeling he had. Why? Because one of the qawaid of metaphorical speech in Arabic is if the mustard comes for ta'kid or tawkid. In other words, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا It's impossible to be metaphorical in the language of the Arabs. And in the first place, the scholars differed is their metaphorical language in Arabic anyway. Some of them said Arabic has no metaphorical language. Some of them said it has metaphorical language, but not in the Quran. Because of the fact that they said, Metaphorical language is vague and open to interpretation and the Qur'an is not vague and open to interpretation. There's a long discussion among it. Like in here, it's impossible for it to be metaphorical because first of all, Allah brings the word taklima, which the scholars of the language said, whenever this word comes, it cancels out any metaphorical language. You know what do we mean by metaphorical language? And if, for example, if you were to say, Muhammad is a lion. For example, not Muhammad is like a lion, that's a comparison. Muhammad is a lion. Yeni, he's brave. So they differed about this language. Does it come in the Quran or it doesn't come in the Quran? Is it, does it exist in Arabic or not? The, the reason for the argumentation about it is because this is the main argument the people who deny or twist the meanings of Allah's names and attributes use is they, is they try to say that all of Allah's names and attributes are metaphorical. Or all of them are metaphorical except the ones that their intellects agree with. For, for this reason, Ahl Sunnah and he fought with them over the issue of metaphorical language. And like the point is, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا The word taklima shows that it's not possible for this to be a metaphor. And he spoke to him. And here, nada, and he called out to him. And nida is with a, uh, with a, a voice that is heard. Yeah? That doesn't resemble the voice of, of human beings or Allah's creation. But Allah spoke with a, with a sound that is heard. Because you cannot say nada as is in these ayat or وَكَلَّمَ مُوسَى وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا unless it is something that is heard. Some of them were so troubled by this ayah that some of the people of innovation, they tried to change the subject and object around. So they tried to say, yes, you're right, it can't be metaphorical. So it means that Musa spoke to Allah. 
And they said, it's true, it can't, be a, it can't be a metaphor. We agree, we all have this rule that if that word taklima comes, it can't be metaphorical, you're right. So it must be Musa spoke to Allah, even though it says Allah spoke to Musa. Like, and again, it came, وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ There is no way to mix the subject and object here. It's clear. It's not in, so now, between those two ayat, they got stuck. Because now they're in trouble. Because to them, you cannot have speech of Allah that is heard. Like in, by their own rules they set out, not by anybody else's, by their own rules they set out, <clears throat> this has to be real speech. It can't be majaz. It can't be metaphorical. For this, all of them, yani, they got themselves in a knot over it, <clears throat> trying to explain how is it that, that Allah spoke to Musa. But the reality is that Allah Azza wa speaks whenever He wants to whoever He wants. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. And uh, we're going to come to the ayah. Inni illa wahyan aw min wara'i hijab. Either Allah speaks to them by revelation or Allah Azza wa speaks to them from behind a veil. Yani they don't see Allah Azza wa in this life. Like in Allah spoke to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah spoke to Musa. Minhum man kallam Allah, those are some of the prophets Allah spoke to them. For Musa was honored by this. And Musa is any Kalimullah, the one that Allah spoke to him. And Allah spoke to the Prophet Muhammad in the in the Mi'raj. And, but this is an honor for Musa. For don't people don't need to make these problems for themselves, trying to dig themselves out of a hole. Because the only thing that put them in that hole in the first place, to be honest with you is influence of the non-Muslims. Because the Muslims never ever had a problem with the fact that Allah spoke to Musa. Never ever. And for them, it was a non-issue. It was like Allah spoke to Musa, that's an honor for Musa. And Allah doesn't resemble his creation. Musa heard what Allah said because Allah called out to him, Ya Musa. And Musa heard what Allah said. And there's no problem with that. Allah speaks in a way that befits his majesty. And it's not like the way of his creation, and that's it. That was it. Later people came who had been affected by philosophy, who had been affected by uh, philosophy from India, from Greece, from Rome, who had been affected by the Jews and Christians and their kind of philosophical sects. And they, got, they, they came along and they were the ones who made a problem about this. And they started running around trying to explain how these things are all metaphorical and they're not actually real. And Allah doesn't really rise and Allah really doesn't speak and Allah really doesn't do this and that. And all of it is, is yani, completely, completely unnecessary. And that's why the people who held this belief, honestly, the vast majority of them in the end of their life made tawbah, hatta the imma of them. The great imams among them, they made tawbah from it. And you find all of them one by one. Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, look at uh, Abu Ma'ali al-Juwaini, al-Ghazali, those who fell into this, يعني, and more than that, al-Razi, Fakhruddin al-Razi, all of them made tawbah from it. For how can you hold a belief? <laughs> even your imams don't, don't hold it. يعني. يعني, even the imams among you, they made tawbah from it. Sahih, they didn't make complete tawbah in a way that there were still some issues here and there. But generally speaking, they made tawbah from it and they warned the people against it. And they told the people there's nothing good from this. For ultimately, it's, you know, the Quran is easy. Just take it as it came. Allah said that Allah spoke to Musa. Allah spoke to Musa. But in a way that befits Allah's majesty. And Allah doesn't resemble his creation. They said, if Allah spoke to Musa, do you say that Allah has a tongue? He said, Allah never said that, that about himself. So we don't need to say it about him. We only need to say about Allah what he said about himself, right? And he, Allah said he has a face. Allah has said he has hands. Like in Allah, I didn't find a text in the Quran or the Sunnah that said that. So we just say about Allah what he said about himself. We believe in what it says as it is. We don't try and twist it or confuse it. We believe in what it says as it is. 
and we don't compare Allah to his creation. It's very simple. Uh, you'll find, you know, this, this is why in the Quran translation, these three translations generally are free of, generally are free of ta'wil, ta'wil as-sifat, you, generally speaking, from what I've seen. That is the clear Quran and Sahih International, and definitely Muhsin Khan, which is the best of them in this, are generally free of ta'wil as-sifat. They, they generally bring the sifat of Allah as they should be. The others you will see, Compare them, and you open up some of the others in these ayat, you will see Allah inspired to Musa, Allah, Allah made Musa have a thought, Allah, any, anything to avoid any, what is actually said. Having said that, there are mawad, there are some limited places where in the clear Quran and Sahih International, there are one or two mistakes in the Asma al Sifat. I don't believe it's deliberate because I think if it was deliberate, they would have done it all the way through the ayat of sifat. And, but what you see is they did it here any, sometimes. For example, changing a'yunina to observing us. In our observation or something like that. That seems to me, any, you're taking away from the meaning of al-ayn. And in sifat thabita lillahi azza wa jal. One or two places, yani. There's one or two issues in it. Like, in, I don't believe that they're deliberate. Because when you go through it, you go through the ayat of sifat and the ayat where these deviant groups twisted the meaning, you find that 99% of the time, these three translations don't divert the meaning away from the meaning that came with the ayat. Like, in, there's just some mulahadat here and there. That's why I said, like, for example, I personally feel the translation, for example, uh, of Sahih International for Ayun, as it is here in front of me. I don't know if they've corrected it later on, but the one I have in front of me, Ayun as watching us, is not uh, correct. In the Ayun is Al uh, Ayn, in Allah's eyes, Subhanahu wa Taala. So you'll find, you know, here and there places where things are not quite translated properly. That's the value of the. Uh, the uh, translation of uh, Sheikh uh, Taqiyuddin al-Hilali and uh, Muhammad Muhsin Khan. The value of that translation is that you can be confident it doesn't have ta'wil al-sifat in it. It doesn't have distortion in Allah's attributes. Like in the other two are, are reasonable. There is definitely mulahavat. And there's places where I would say this translation is not right. Like in the zahir from it is that it's a khata, it's not, it's not deliberate, yani. it's not like that they set out to make, to make it wrong. Yani they just maybe didn't quite choose the right word or didn't quite get the translation right. That's what it seems. Otherwise, I don't, yani, Sahih International, I know who, who produced the translation. Like in uh, the Dr. Mustafa uh, Khattab who did the clear Quran, I, I don't know yani, about the situation or anything like that. But from reading the translation, there is no, there is no ta'wil of sifat in in general now. وَأَنْ أَلْقِ عَصَاكَ فَلَمَّا رَأَهَا تَهْتَزُ كَأَنَّهَا جَانُ وَلَا مُدْبِرًا وَلَمْ يُعَقِّبْ يَا مُوسَى أَقْبِلْ وَلَا تَخَفْ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْآمِنِينَ And he was told, throw down your staff, but when he saw it, a writhing. Writhing. As if it was a snake, he turned in flight and did not return. Allah said, O oh Musa, approach and fear not. Indeed, you are of the secure. Now, Islu. Oslu. Oslu. Oh. Remember, oh. the Dhamma on the middle uh, root letter makes a Dhamma on the Hamza. أسلك يدك في جيبك تخرج بيضاء من غير سوء واضمم إليك واضمم إليك جناحك من الرهب فذلك برهانان من ربك إلى فرعون وملئه 
إنهم كانوا قوما فاسقين. Insert your hand into the opening of your garment. It will come out white without disease. And draw in your arm close to you as prevention from fear. For those are two proofs from your Lord to Fir'aun and his establishment. Indeed, they have been a people defiantly disobedient. Yeah. Uh, here, yani, shining white. We said generally, the word, yani, when the word abiyad is used for uh, skin, in Arabic, it usually means shining. The Arabs usually, they did, sometimes they use the word abiyad for people who have very, very fair skin. Like, and typically they don't call, like they didn't used to call someone yani, abiyad, the way we would say he's white. And they would, maybe they would use abiyad if the person had like extremely fair skin. But generally speaking, they would use the word ahmar, in yani red. Like in here, it will come out white, yani shining, shining bright. Yeah, white, shining white. That's why I like the clear Quran's translation here. It will come out shining white. As for the opening in the garment, it's the opening at the, at the chest or at the neck, the neck and the chest. It's called the jape. And cross your arms tightly to calm your fears. They said, any when Musa would put his hand back in, his hand would come out back in its normal state. So what would happen? He would put his hand in, it would come out shining bright. And Musa was dark skinned. They say so, that he was dark skinned. So it would come out shining bright. And when he would put his hand back inside, it would return back to its normal, its normal state. And cross your arms tightly to calm your fears. And you draw your arm in close to you. Some of them said cross it or draw your hand close to your side. To be fear, to be, to, yani in other words, when you bring your hand, either you cross your hand or you put your hand by your side. What will happen is the fear of the snake will go away and the fear of what is happening to your hand will go away. These are two signs from your Lord to Fir'aun and his people. In his... Uh, and his chiefs or his uh, establishment, and they are a people who are any fasiqeen. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي قَتَلْتُ مِنْهُمْ نَفْسًا فَأَخَافُ أَنْ يَقْتُلُونَ He said, my Lord, indeed, I killed from among them someone, and I fear they will kill me. وَأَخِي هَارُونُ هُوَ أَفْصَحُ مِنِّي لِسَانًا فَأَرْسِلْهُ مَعِي رِدَأً يُصَدِّقُنِي إِنِّي أَخَافُ أَنْ يُكَذِّبُونَ And my brother Harun is, Harun is more fluent than me in tongue. So send him with me as support, verifying me. Indeed, I hear that they will deny me. I think eloquent would be better than fluent here. Uh, afsah is eloquence, not fluency. And my brother Harun is more eloquent than me in tongue. So send him with me as a support. And he to uh, verify what I say, to confirm what I say. يصدقني, a tasdiq is to say to someone, Sadaqta, you spoke the truth. I need to confirm the truth of what I am coming with. Because I'm scared that they will deny me. قَالَ سَنَشُدُّ عَضُدَكَ بِأَخِيكَ وَنَجَعَلْ لَكُمَا وَنَجَعَلُ لَكُمْ قَالَ سَنَشُدُّ عَضُدَكَ بِأَخِيكَ وَنَجَعَلُ لَكُمَا سُلْطَانًا فَلَا يَصِلُونَ إِلَيْكُمَا بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْتُمَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَكُمَ الْغَالِبُونَ Allah said, we will strengthen your arm through your brother and grant you both supremacy. 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 So they will not reach you. It will be through our signs, you and those who follow you will be the predominant. And you will prevail. I prefer the word prevail or is better for Ghali Bunyani. So those who follow, who follow you will prevail. Yani they, will be, they will be successful. They will, they will be the victorious. 
فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا بَيِّنَاتٍ قَالُوا مَا هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُفْتَرَى إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُفْتَرَى وَمَا سَمِعْنَا بِهَذَا فِي آيَاتِنَا If you're going to join between uh, يعني مفترى it has the تنوين on it, right? فلما جاءهم موسى بآياتنا بينات قالوا ما هذا إلا سحر مفترى إلا سحر you can, you can continue from there if you want to وما سمعنا بهذا وما سمعنا بهذا في آبائنا الأولين but when Musa came to them with our signs as clear evidences, they said, this is not except invented magic and we have not heard of this religion among our forefathers. No. As, the, as others before them said. وَقَالَ مُوسَى رَبِّ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ رَبِّ You have a mad here. وَقَالَ مُوسَى رَبِّ أَعْلَمُ وقال موسى ربي أعلم بمن جاء بالهدى من عنده ومن تكون له عاقبة الدار إنه لا يفلح الظالمون And Musa said, my Lord is more knowing than we or you of who has come with guidance from him and to whom will be succession in the home. Indeed, wrongdoers do not succeed. I also feel succession in the home is not very clear what it's meant here, but any who will inherit the final abode, and either in the hereafter or in this world, any who will inherit uh, this country after you, Allah knows best who is gonna, whether you or I will inherit this land, or it refers to Jannah, any who will inherit the, the who will inherit paradise now. وقال فرعون يا أيها الملأ ما علمت لكم من إله غيري فأوقد لي يا هامان فأوقد لي يا هامان على الطين فاجعل لي صرحا لعلي أطلع إلى إله موسى and Fir'aun said, O oh, eminent ones, I have not known you to have a god other than me. Then ignite for me, O oh, Ham, oh, 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 Haman, uh, a fire upon the clay, and make for me a tower that I may look at the god of Musa. And indeed, I do think he is among the liars. Here there's uh, two things. First of all, what does he mean a fire upon the clay? Any big, big bricks for me. And he baked bricks for me. Like in here, there is yani, a very, very big benefit. Where did Fir'aun believe that the God of Musa was? Sky. Folk. Yeah. It's clear, right? Fir'aun says, Ya Haman, he's making fun of Musa. Build me a really tall tower because I want to go up into the heavens where Musa tells me that Allah is. For how sad is it that a person, Fir'aun, knows more about where Allah is than that person does? And the people who say Allah is everywhere. فَوَيْلٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَعْلَمُ مِنْهُ بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And he woe to the person that Fir'aun knows more about Allah than them. And Fir'aun clearly, twice it also comes in uh, and elsewhere in the Qur'an. Ya Ha'man, and he, Ija'alli sarhan la'alli attali'u ila ilahi Musa. She to build me a, a, a huge tower because I want to climb, climb up. Elsewhere in the Qur'an, he says, Fanili sarhan la'alli abalugh al-asbab, asbab al-samawati wal أسباب السماوات فأطلع إلى 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 إله موسى. He said, build me a tower so I can go through the gates of the heaven above and look at the God of Musa. 
And I believe that he's lying to me in telling me that Allah is فَوْقَ samawat Above the heavens. But don't be from those people that Fir'aun knows more about Allah than them. وَاسْتَكْبَرَ هُوَ وَجُنُودُهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَظَنُّوا وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا يُرْجَعُونَ And he was arrogant. He and his soldiers in the land without right. And they thought that they would not be returned to us. فَأَخَذْنَاهُ وَجُنُودَهُ فَنَبَذْنَاهُمْ فِي الْيَمِّ فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الظَّالِمِينَ So we took him and his soldiers and threw them into the sea. So see how was the end of the wrongdoers. Nah, that's why we've already explained that before now. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَدَعُونَ إِلَى النَّارِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يُنصَرُونَ And we made them leaders, inviting to the fire, and on the day of resurrection they will not be helped. Any leaders here, uh, maybe a better word, leaders is okay, but maybe a better word would be any leading examples, perhaps, something like that. Any, we made them as examples that people follow. Any, every tyrant who came after them, and he's not going to bring something that Fir'aun didn't bring. Many tyrants came after Fir'aun. And they, any Fir'aun is their Imam. وَأَتْبَعْنَاهُمْ فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا لَعْنَةِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ هُمْ مِنَ الْمَقْبُوحِينَ And we caused to overtake them in this world a curse and on the day of resurrection they'll be on the despised. Yani maybe yani you could say المقبوحين, the hideous any yani those people who will be yani in a disgusting state من القبح وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَهْلَكْنَا الْقُرُونَ الْأُولَى بَصَائِرَ لِلنَّاسِ بَصَائِرَ لِلنَّاسِ وَهُدًى وَرَحْمَةً لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ And we gave Musa the scripture after we had destroyed the former generations as enlightenment for the people and guidance and mercy, that they might be reminded. وَمَا كُنْتَ بِجَانِبِ الْغَرْبِيِّ إِذْ قَضَيْنَا إِذْ قَضَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى الْأَمْرَ وَمَا كُنْتَ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ And you, O Muhammad, were not on the western side of the mount when we revealed to Musa the command and you were not among the witnesses to that. From this is also a benefit that the Arab of Quraysh, they were, they were aware of these stories, particularly the ones in the Arabian Peninsula, especially, and also Musa, uh, because Musa is probably the only prophet of Bani Israel. I don't want to say the only, but he's the only prophet of Bani Israel that comes frequently in the Surah Makiya. In, in Surah Madaniya, and there's a like, the, but Musa's story, and it, it, you feel like the details of it. And it seems like it's not the only one. Like, and it seems like they were familiar with the story of Musa. In Quraysh, were familiar with the story of Musa, but they didn't know the details of it. And they didn't, the detail given in the Quran is it goes beyond any detail. And it even goes beyond the details that, that are given in the in the Torah and the Injil. And that's why Allah reminds the Prophet, you are not there. Where did you get these details from? You're bringing details that not even Ahl Kitab 
had it in any of their books. And you were not present when Allah spoke to Musa and when he was given the commandments. And you were not from the people who witnessed it. For this Quran, it came from the one who knows everything in the heavens and the earth and who witnessed and knows what it is that happened to Musa and Nuh. For as I said, yani, the, the Quraysh knew vaguely about these stories. Yani, they knew the story of Ad and, and Thamud, the people of Madian, the people of Lut, they knew about it because they used to pass by the destruction of the people of Lut, the, the Dead Sea. They used to pass by it. So they knew of it. They knew about the story of Musa very vaguely. But the detail that came in the Quran, many times the Prophet is told, where did you get it from? And you were not there, neither were they there. And neither is it mentioned in this detail in the Torah and the Injil. Where it came from? Al Alim al Hakim. وَلَكِنَّا أَنشَأْنَا قُرُونًا فَتَطَاوَلَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْعُمُرُ وَمَا كُنْتَ ثَاوِيًا فِي أَهْلِ مَدْيَنَ تَتْلُو عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِنَا وَلَكِنَّا كُنَّا مُرْسِلِينَ but we produced many generations after Musa and prolonged was their duration. And you were not resident among the people of Madian, reciting to them our verses, but we were senders of this message. Now, their, their, their duration was prolong, prolonged and they began to neglect the commands of Allah. Because some, usually uh, the sunnah of Allah Azza wa with regard to a people is people need a constant reminder refreshing of the message so when the when the message first comes people can be any they can stick to it and he wants the initial disbelief and any people accept the message they stick to it then as time goes on the message gets diluted and it becomes lost and it becomes uh, weakened and that's a sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what allah does with people and that's from the benefits of this ummah is that Allah sends every hundred years someone to renew the people's any attachment to the deen. And it's not a prophet. It's a, it's a, from the beloved servants of Allah, Allah sends every hundred years someone who renews for the people their connection to the religion. Any A scholar, a person of knowledge, a person of righteousness, who has an impact on the whole Muslim world and brings them back. Because otherwise, as your ages look, get prolonged and as your time on earth gets prolonged, the habit of people is to become any weak, is to weaken in their connection to their faith. And we don't know who people are every hundred years. People have, you know, the scholars have views about it. Like in one, the first one of them, you will almost find, almost find agreement that it was Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And Allah knows best. You don't have a text for it. Like you'll almost not find someone who had a, a view other than that, and that it was Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Who came and called the people back. And go back to the way of the Sahaba. Go back to the way of the Khulafa al-Rashidin. That's why people, and he somewhat incorrectly call him, the fifth rightly guided Khalifa. That's incorrect because it takes away from Muawiyah and Muawiyah was a Sahabi radiallahu anhu. The Sahaba are better than other people. So it's not like, it's not fair to Muawiyah in, in reality. But they said that because of how much he resembled the first four. For other, you, know, you don't have a text about who the people, the Mujaddid is that comes Allah sends. And it doesn't have to be necessarily one specific person. It could be a, a two or three people who came to and Allah sent them to call people back to the deen. Their impact is seen across the whole Muslim world. For people have, and you'll see people with different views who in different generations and 
things like that. But that's that's from any the benefits you take from the ayah that the longer you live without someone coming to remind you, the more you are likely to leave the commands of Allah and stray from them. You need regular reminders. فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ you're not living among the people of Madian. And he says to the Prophet ﷺ, neither in the time of Shu'aib nor in the time when Musa came to Madian. You are not living among them. But this revelation was sent to you and you were appointed as a messenger. And Allah sent messengers and this is a message from Allah. Uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا كُنْتَ بِجَانِبِ الطُّورِ إِذْ نَادَيْنَا وَلَكِنْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَلَكِنْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ لِتُنْذِرَ قَوْمًا مَا أَتَاهُمْ مِنْ نَذِيرٍ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ نَذِيرٍ مِنْ قَبَلِكَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ And you were not at the side of the mount when we called Musa uh, yeah. But yeah. And you were not at the side of the mount when we called Musa But, were, but If it said when we called out to Musa it would make it would be a bit more sense anyway. When, when we, we called out to Musa But were sent uh, as a mercy from your Lord to warn a people to whom no warner had come before you that they might be reminded. Yeah. And if not that a disaster should strike them for their hands put forth of the of sins. And they would say, Our Lord, why did you send why did you, why you did not send us a messenger so we could have followed your verses and been among the believers? And if Allah did not send them a messenger, then when something struck them a punishment, they would say, why did you not send us a messenger? أَوَلَمْ يَكْفُرُوا بِمَا أُوْتِيَ مُوسَى مِنْ قَبْلِ قَالُوا سِحْرَانِ تَظَاهَرَا وَقَالُوا إِنَّا بِكُلِّ كَافِرُونَ But when the truth came to them from us, they said, Why was he not given like that which was given to Musa? Did he not disbelieve in that which was given to Musa before? They said, <clears throat> they are but two works of magic supporting each other. And indeed, we are both disbelievers. Now, uh, here it's said that the, that the meaning of the ayah, or the reason the ayah was, that, bear in mind there's a difference between the reason the ayah was revealed and the meaning of the ayah. The meaning of the ayah is clear, but the reason for it, it said that some of the mushrikeen came to some of the Jewish authorities and this is from the clear Qur'an, to inquire about the message of the Prophet ﷺ and were told there is a reference to him in the Torah. So they said, Sihrani, yani, the Torah is magic and the Qur'an is magic. Yani, the, the, so this is the, the view that Quraysh, this is what I mean, that Quraysh were familiar with Musa. It seems like Quraysh, they had some connection to some of the Jewish scholars in some way because this is something that you see it more than once in the ayah in the surah makkiya that they that they speak to the prophet about musa in detail as though they had and i don't i i don't recall any where that was from there was of course people who had accepted christianity that was the likes of waraka but nawfal uh radiyallahu anhu uh who was uh 
any from those people. And he was not a Sahabi because he he died before he could have become a Sahabi, like and he wanted to be. So he's like a you can call him Tabi'i and Mukhadram. He's a Tabi'i who came before the time of the Tabi'i. Like in uh, Waraka uh, bin Nawfal, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He had accepted Islam. He had accepted Islam. He had accepted Christianity in the time of uh, pre Islam. There were, but you can see from the Surah Makkiyah a lot that it comes that they were talking in detail about Musa and the book of Musa. But it seems like they, some of them had some yani, connection to some of the Ahbar, the, the Jewish uh, rabbis or people of knowledge. So they had something from that. Like in when some of the Jewish rabbis told them that the signs of the Prophet ﷺ are present in the Torah, they said this Torah is Sihr and the Quran is Sihr. And they disbelieved in the Torah and the Quran. They said, ah, see, we don't believe in the Torah and we don't believe in the Quran. Why did they disbelieve in the Torah? Because they were told that it contains the sign of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ فَأْتُوا بِكِتَابٍ مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ هُوَ أَهْدَى مِنْهُ مَا أَتَّبِعْهُ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Say, then bring a scripture from Allah which is more guiding than either of them that I may follow it if you should be truthful. Either of them, yani the Torah and the Qur'an. And you find me a scripture more that will guide me more than the Qur'an and the Torah because they, they said we don't believe in the Torah. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ But if they do not respond to you, then know that they only follow their own desires and who is most astray than one who follows his desires without guidance from Allah. Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. وَلَقَدْ وَصَّلْنَا لَهُمُ الْقَوْلَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ and we have repeatedly conveyed to them the word that they might be reminded. No. And he regularly and, and steadfastly delivered to them the Quran. الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبَلِهِ هُمْ بِهِ يُؤْمِنُونَ Those to whom we gave the scripture before they are believers in it. وَإِذَا يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِهِ إِنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّنَا إِنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مُسْلِمِينَ And when it is recited to them, they say, we have believed in it. Indeed, is the truth from our Lord. Indeed, we were even before it Muslims. And we had submitted to Allah before it by following the previous scripture. And now when we see the Quran, we recognize the truth of it and we submit to it. <laughs> Those will be given their reward twice for what they patiently endured and because they avert evil through good. And for what we have provided them, they spend. Uh, they'll be given their reward twice. Uh, their reward twice because they believe twice. And that's the likes of the one who believes in the prophet of their, yani, their people before. Yani. For example, someone who believe, believes in Isa, والسلام, and they, they took what they could from Christianity at the time when that was the message that reached them. And then when the message of Islam came to them, they accepted it. This person will receive 
the Iman, the reward of Iman of the people of Isa and the reward of Iman yani, in the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, yani, believing in the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, for the person will give their reward, get their reward uh, twice. وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا اللَّغْوَ أَعْرَضُوا عَنْهُ وَقَالُوا لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَقَالُوا لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ لَا نَبْتَغِ الْجَاهِلِينَ And when they hear ill speech, they turn away from it and say, for us are our deeds and for you are your deeds. Peace will be upon you. We seek not the ignorant. And if you said salam here, it would be better. Yani, salam will be upon you. We are not, yani, we want nothing to do with the people who are ignorant. What is the salam here? The salam here is not as salam al-shara'i al-istilahi. It's not as salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The salam here goes back to the original meaning. And he's, like Ibrahim said to his father, قَالَ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ It doesn't mean salamun alayk, doesn't mean assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He's an idol worshiper. Salamun alayk, it means that you won't receive the same bad treatment from me that you're doing to me. Any salam, you're, 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 you are safe when it comes to my treatment towards you. And your treatment towards me may be bad. You know, Ibrahim's father, he said, I'm going to stone you. Ibrahim said, Salam on Alaik. And if you're going to stone me, I'm not going to do the same to you. you know, you're safe from me, even though you're threatening me, but you're safe from, from me. Yeah. And Allah is all of the, all kinds of evil talk and wasteful speech. And we spoke about it earlier. إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبَتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُهْتَدِينَ Indeed, O oh Muhammad, you do not guide whom you like, but Allah guides whom He wills, and He is most knowing of the rightly guided. وَقَالُوا وَقَالُوا إِنَّ اتَّبِعِ الْهُدَى مَعَكَ نُطَقُ وَقَالُوا إِنَّ اتَّبِعِ الْهُدَى إِنَّ اتَّبِعِ وَقَالُوا إِنَّ اتَّبِعِ الْهُدَى مَعَكَ نُتَقَطَّفْ مِنْ أَرْضِنَا وَقَالُوا إِنَّ اتَّبِعِ الْهُدَى مَعَكَ نُتَقَطَّفْ طف من أرضنا أولم نمكن لهم حرما آمنا يجبا إليه ثمرات ثمرات كل شيء رزقا من لدنا ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون and they say if we were to follow the guidance with you, we would be swept from our land. Have we not established for them a safe sanctuary to which are brought the fruits of all things as provision from us? But most of them do not know. Now, we would be swept from our lands by the other tribes. Any people would come and invade our lands. If we follow your message, we'll, we're going to be invaded by the other tribes. وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ بَطِرَتْ مَعَيْشَتَهَا وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ بَطِرَتْ مَعِيشَتَهَا فَتِلْكَ مَسَاكِنُهُمْ لَمْ فَتِلْكَ مَسَاكِنُهُمْ لَمْ تُسْكَمْ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا وَكُنَّا نَحْنُ الْوَارِثِينَ And how many a city have we destroyed that was insolent in its way of living? And those are their dwellings which have not been inhabited after them, except briefly. And it is we who are the inheritors. Um, except briefly means that yani, when people would be on a journey, they might take shelter under them. Yani, for example, a traveling a group of travelers might go there and take a shelter there. But nobody lives in that place anymore. And they had 
يعني they had very comfortable living يعني بطيرت معيشتها they had extremely comfortable luxurious living and then Allah Azza destroyed them and their houses no one lived in them after that they became ruins that are just used to pitch the tents for the people who are traveling on the road وما كان ربك مهلك القرى حتى يبعث في امها رسولا يتلو عليهم اياتنا وما كنا مهلك القرى الا واهلها ظالمون and never would your lord have destroyed the cities until he had sent to their mother a messenger reciting to them our verses and we would not destroy the cities except while their people were wrongdoers in their mother here that soul needs to be changed man that definitely needs to be changed because it's just too literally i mean it's like it it makes sense in arabic but it doesn't come into english at all and we don't destroy a town until we send their mother a messenger and it doesn't like you don't understand it at all like in the um of something is what something goes back to and so here the mother town that's fine until we sent to their mother town that could be like their mother town or their principal city that's why the surah al fatiha is called um al quran or um al kitab because the whole quran goes back to it and the the core of something and its principal thing is called al um but to, to translate as mother like that is very very difficult for people to understand and it needs to be said until he sent to their mother town yeah? until he sent to their mother town or he sent to their principal city for this shows that if there were many qura like little villages it's not necessary that allah azza wa jalla would have sent to every single village a warner but he would if that village is underneath If for example you have Makkah and you have little little villages around it yeah and he saw Allah Azza wa Jalla sent the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he sent him to the whole world like if you look, if you look for example at Madian and if you take the view that ashabul aika are a different people to, to the people of Madian city that's a view right that ashabul aika uh, are not the people of Madian itself but they're the people of a wood or a forest nearby to Madian If that's the case then Shu'aib is sent to both of them he sent to the the city the capital city or the central city and he sent to the in the villages that are around it's not necessary that every village should have a separate warner but some villages they will have the warner sent to the the primary city the capital city and then from there the message will be sent out to the different villages like Makkah and Ta'if and in those in different places the surrounding areas yeah, for which makkah is the the capital now wa ma utitum min shay'in fa mata'u al-hayati ad-dunya wa zinatuha wa ma 'inda Allah khayrun wa abqa afala ta'qilun whatever thing you people have been given is only for the enjoyment of worldly life and its adornment and that and what is with Allah is better and more lasting so will you not use reason now I, i see we have around three and a bit pages is that right to end the surah now just check that for me so one two three and a half three and a half so what i'm going to do is take five minute break and then i am only planning just to finish the, the surah just uh, surah al-qasas yani, to end this session i think everyone is is feeling the 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 effects of uh, many classes back to back along with the other activities of Ramadan so uh, yani yeah, and i'm not saying i'm innocent of that either <laughs> i'm also feeling it a bit um so let's we've got three pages instead of me you know stumbling through them let's take five minutes to refresh ourselves 10 minutes let's come back and maybe any in half an hour any after that we we 45 minutes any we can be finished with those three pages and that's enough for us because we've that means we we're about what four or five pages after that short of the of the juz inshallah so that's acceptable for me especially because if you're planning for tonight thinking about coming up for tonight and the 
any and, and what's going on. Any it, it doesn't make sense for us to be all morning here till 10 o'clock or something like that. So five, 10 minute break. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasulih nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Amma ba'd so we said we'll get to the end of the surah inshallah ta'ala we'll stop there so we have around three and a little bit pages left to go Afaman wa'adana wa'adan hasana fahuwa laqihi kaman matta'na hu matta'al hayati dunya ثم هو يوم القيامة من المحضرين. Then is he whom we have promised a good promise which we, he will meet, like he for whom we provided enjoyment of worldly life. But then he is on the day of resurrection among those presented for a punishment in hell. Now the one who was promised a promise of Jannah, whatever happens to him in this world. And in other words, he's from the people of Jannah. Whatever happens to him in this world. And the one who had the most luxurious life in this world, but Yawm Al-Qiyamah, he will be punished. Are those two, any, are those two uh, equal? Or are those two the same? وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُ أَيْنَ شُرَكَائِيَ الَّذِينَ كُنْتُمْ تَزْعُمُونَ And one of the day, he will call them and say, Where are my parents, but where are my partners, which used to claim? قَالَ الَّذِينَ حَقَّ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقَوْلُ رَبَّنَا هَاؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ أَغْوَيْنَا هَاؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ أَغْوَيْنَا أَغْوَيْنَاهُمْ كَمَا غَوَيْنَا تَبَرَّأْنَا إِلَيْكِ مَا كَانُوا إِيَّانَا يَعْبُدُونَ Those upon whom the, whom the word will have come into effect will say, Our Lord, these are the ones we led to error. We led them to error just as we were in error. We declare our disassociation from them. Oh, yeah. Uh, dissociation from them to you. They did not used to worship us. Now, it would be better if it said, because the order is not clear, we declare to you our disassociation from them. And sometimes one problem in Sahih International is sometimes they are so strict on the Arabic order of the sentence that they bring a sentence that people wouldn't understand in English. So it would be better if we said, we declare to you, yani to Allah, our disassociation from them. That would be easier to understand. Naam. We led them into error just as we were in error. Yani they did not yani used to. It was not us that they worshipped. And that's come before in their claim that it wasn't us that they worshipped. And that's a claim that they make. It, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge between them yawm al-qiyamah about the claims that they, they make. وَقِيلَ دَعُوا شُرَكَاءَكُمْ فَدَعَوْهُمْ فَلَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَهُمْ وَرَأَوُ الْعَذَابِ لو أنهم كانوا يهتدون And it will be said, invoke your partners and they will invoke them But they will not respond to them and, will, and they will see the punishment If only they had followed guidance And he make dua to your partners And they will make dua to them but the partners will not respond to them And he, again this is said by way of rebuke, not by way of permissibility Not that it's permissible to make dua to them But go ahead, make dua to them, see what happens and when they make dua to them, there is no answer. وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُ مَاذَا أَجَبْتُمُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And mention the day. He will call them and say, What did you answer the messengers? In what response did you give them? That's better in the clear Qur'an. What response did you give the messengers? So here that means the messengers will be asked in the ayahs in which surah? A similar ayah to this where the messengers get asked at the end of the surah. Surah Al-Ma'idah. Surah Al-Ma'idah. 
when Allah Azza wa Jalla says to the messengers, "Mada ujibtum," any what? How did people respond to you? Here, the people asked, "Mada ajibtum," al musarin. Any how did you respond? And that is from the ayah in Surah Al-Araf where Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Wala nasalna ladina ursila ilayhim, wala nasalna al musarin." We will certainly ask the people who was who messengers were sent to them, and we will certainly ask the messengers themselves. So both of them get asked. فعميت عليهم الأنباء يومئذ فهم لا يتساءلون. But the information will be unapparent to them. That day, so they will not be able to ask one another. Yani, they they will. It, I think the word obscured is the best word here. It's better than dumbstruck. Obscured is in the Muslim Khan translation. Yani, the the news of the answers will be obscured to them. Yani, their ability to answer or to ask each other for answers. Yani, what shall you say? What shall we say? How shall we answer? That will be obscured from them on that day, so they will not be able to ask each other. But as for one who had repented, believed, and done righteousness, is expected that he will be among the successful. وَرَبُّكَ يَعْلَمُ مَا تُكِ no, no. No. وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ مَا كَانَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَتَعَالَى عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ And your Lord creates what He wills and chooses. Not for them was the choice. Exalted is Allah and high above what they associate with Him. Now this ayah is very, uh, yani, has a lot of points of benefit. It's very important. Allah creates what He wants and chooses. So this is joining between al khalq wal amr or al khalq wal qadr, like the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, "Ala lahu al khalq wal amr." To Allah belongs creation and command. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal has the ability to create, which no one has but Him, and the ability to control. Everything that happens in the world, no one has it but him. So Yahtar, he chooses everything. And this is, he chooses who to send as a prophet, he chooses who to guide, he chooses who to misguide. That's why it's left open. Wayahtar. It's not said Wayahtar al Mursaleen, for example. He chooses the prophets. And Yahtar, Ma Yurid. He chooses anything he wants. Who to put to Jannah, who to put in Jahannam, who to forgive, who not to forgive. Ma kana lahum al the choice is not theirs. And the choice is not theirs. You don't have a choice. You have the ability that Allah Azza wa has created within you. And in terms of a limited will to choose in that sense, like and you don't have the ability to override the qadr of Allah. That's the meaning here. And you don't have the ability to override the qadr of Allah Azza wa to override the choice that Allah has made for you. You have the ability to choose within what you is presented to you. You have actions that you can choose to do this or to do that. But ultimately your choices will only be carried out if Allah chooses for them to happen. For the one of you who wants to be upright, and you chose to be an upright Muslim, but you'll not be able to choose unless Allah wills for you to be that person. So you have to ask Allah for his help and you have to work hard. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. Yani Allah is free and exalted and high above those they associate in partners that neither have al-khalq nor do they have al-amr. They don't have al-khira, the choices. Yani their idols don't have the ability to choose anything or to will anything. The, they don't have the ability to create anything. They don't have the ability to control anything. Therefore, your worship of them is invalid. 
وَرَبُّكَ يَعْلَمُ مَا تُكِنُّ صُدُورُهُمْ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ And your Lord knows what their breasts conceal and what they declare. Any rather Allah Azza wa Jalla knows everything about them. Any those other creation that you call upon besides Allah, Allah Azza wa Jalla ahata bihim ilma. Allah has total and complete knowledge of them. For how can you call upon someone that neither does he create, nor does he have command, nor does he have a choice, and Allah knows everything about it, and everything about him. So how can you, this is, this is from the ayat which have ibtal ash-shirk, many of the ayat of the Qur'an that prove the fallacy of shirk, the, how pointless it is to make a partner with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ لَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي الْأُولَى وَالْآخِرَةِ وَلَهُ الْحُكْمُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And he is Allah. There is no deity except him. To him is due all praise in the first life and the hereafter. And his, and his is the final decision. And to him you'll be returned. So here is Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. Yani as a response to the, what Allah has proven from Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. So the previous ayat mentioned the Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. Allah has the creation. Allah has the command. You don't have a choice. Allah has al-Mashi'ah, al-Qadr, is, belongs to Allah. Allah knows everything. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, then what is required from you? What is required from you is Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. La ilaha illallah. لَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي الْأُولَى وَالْآخِرَةِ All praises belongs to him. Why does praise belong to Allah? For his names and his attributes and his actions. In Allah Azza wa Jal يُحْمَدْ يعني على أسمائه وصفاته وأفعاله Allah is praised for his names and attributes and actions which no one shares with him. So we're back again to the concept of الرُّبُوبِيَّ وَالْأَسْمَاءُ وَالصِفَاتِ that if no one shares those names and attributes and actions, then no one deserves to be worshipped except him. Lahul hukm, yani judgment, ruling, legislating, decision, yani everything belong, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you will be returned to him. For here is what is required of those people from Quraysh if they recognize that Allah is their Lord, and what is required from all of the other people as well. And if you recognize Allah as your Lord and creator and the one who controls everything, so what is required from you is la ilaha illallah, the praise of Allah for his names and attributes and actions, which is an act of worship, and that you submit to the command of Allah in his decision, whether that command is hukmuhu uh, al-qadari or hukmuhu shar'i, whether it is his, the command of his in qadr or the command of his in the sharia. Because there are two, right? There's a command in Qadr and a command in the Sharia. And, and you recognize that you will be resurrected. For the ayah is jami'ah, and it's comprehensive ayah in Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِن جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ اللَّيْلَ سَرْمَدًا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ إِلَهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِضِيَاءٌ أَفَلَا تَسْمَعُونَ Say, have you considered if Allah should make for you the night continuous until the day of resurrection? What day other than Allah could bring you light? then will you not hear? It's a very powerful argument that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes against the people who worship other than Allah. All the idols that you have. If Allah Azza wa Jal decreed to make the night forever, which of your idols will bring you the daytime? And which of your idols can bring you daytime? If Allah decrees for the night to last forever, Who's going to bring you daytime except Allah? Then why do you not listen? قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِن جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ النَّهَارَ سَرْمَدًا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ إِلَهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ 
ياتيكم بالليل نعم بليل بليل بذات ال قل ارايتم ان جعل الله عليكم النهار سرمدا الى يوم القيامه من اله غير الله ياتيكم بليل تسكنون فيه افلا تبصرون Say, have you considered if Allah should make for you the day continuous until the day, day of resurrection? What date other than Allah could bring you a night in which you may rest? Then will you not see? Then which of your idols would you call upon to bring you the daytime, uh, to bring you the nighttime? And if Allah made the day last forever and you could not sleep, you could not rest, and who would you make dua to to ask for the nighttime to come? Nobody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِن رَحْمَتِهِ جَعَلَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لِتَسْكُنُوا فِيهِ وَلِتَبَتَغُوا وَلِتَبَتَغُوا مِن فَضْلِهِ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And out of his mercy he made for you the night and the day that you may rest therein and by day seek from his bounty and that perhaps you'll be grateful. Uh, here it could do with a little bit more of the brackets uh, because the rest is in the night and he made for you a night and the day so you may rest in the night and seek his bounty in the day and so you may be grateful and we mentioned that already وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُ أَيْنَ شُرَكَائِيَ الَّذِينَ كُنْتُمْ تَزْعُمُونَ And one of the day he will call them and say, where are my partners which used to claim? وَنَزَعْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ شَهِيدًا فَقُلْنَا هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ فَقُلْنَا هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ فَعَلِمُوا أَنَّ الْحَقَّ لِلَّهِ وَضَلَّ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ And we will extract from every nation a witness and say, Produce your proof and they will know that the truth belongs to Allah and lost from them is that which they used to invent. And uh, the witness is a prophet, I'm the prophet of each nation. إِنَّ قَارُونَ كَانَ مِنْ قَوْمِ مُوسَى فَبَغَى عَلَيْهِمْ وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لِتَنُوا لا تنو The lamb here is not the lamb at ta'aleel The lamb here is to emphasize it The lamb comes two ones, right? With the kasra, it means usually means in order to And it, they both come on the verb So it can be tricky to read them Like sometimes you might read them the wrong way <clears throat> and the one with the kasra usually means in order to, and the one with the fatha is an emphasis, emphasize. Indeed, it was now. There's a hamza on the end. Okay. وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنُوءُ بِالْعُسْبَةِ بِالْعُسْبَةِ أُولِي الْقُوَّةِ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ Okay, now bring the eye again. وَآتَيْنَاهُ وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنُوءُ بِالْعُسْبَةِ أُولِي الْقُوَّةِ أولي القوة إذ قال له قومه لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفرحين. Indeed, Qarun was from the people of Musa, but he tyrannized them, and we gave him of treasures whose keys would burden a band of strong men. Thereupon his people said to him, "Do not exult. Uh, indeed, Allah does not like the exultant." Qarun. Is another figure in the story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. And Qarun, he was from Bani Israel. Uh, 
uh, in terms of the Israeliat, they say that he was the cousin of Musa. I think that's in Taban from the Israeliat, from the stories of the Bani Israel. Like in, he's called Korah. Uh, and he was, Qarun was from the people of Musa, but he, he was a tyrant towards them. And he was extremely, extremely rich. We gave him treasures. The keys to his treasures would burden a band of strong men. And he, uh, basically, he needed a, a band of strong, powerful men to carry the keys to his wealth. Not to carry his wealth, just to carry the keys. He needed a group of strong men to carry his keys. That's how wealthy he was. His people said, La tafrah. Don't be arrogant. Don't be prideful. Don't be ungrateful. And he, in other words, here, yeah, exalt is a good word. But exalt, what does it mean? And you don't be, the word tafrah, it can be to be happy, but don't be happy in a way that is arrogant and prideful. And you don't be exultant. It's just good. Exultant is good, is a good word. But it, just to understand what it means. In the original word is to be happy, but it doesn't mean happiness in a good way. In here, to don't be any, you're looking down on people and you're full of pride and arrogance for what you have and what others don't have. And it's said that uh, any Musa commanded him to pay the zakah and he refused. Well, the Torah and from the Israeliat as well. It's not from, uh, it's not from the, you know, the, the text of the Quran. I can, it's, it's said that Musa commanded him to pay the zakah and he refused. وَبَتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ ولا تبت ولا تبغ الفساد في الأرض إن الله لا يحب المفسدين. But seek through that which Allah has given you, the home of the hereafter, and yet do not forget your share of the world, and do good as Allah has done good to you, and desire not corruption in the land. Indeed, Allah does not like the corruptors. And this ayah is very very important. Uh, for us to stop on it because there's there's a lot of things we're gonna we're going to talk about inshallah uh, ta'ala seek with what Allah has given you the home of the hereafter this is a general statement it's not only for money any whatever Allah has given you and this is a message to everyone. The advice the Bani Israel gave him is golden advice. Wallahi, this advice deserves to be written for a person, nasba aynay, you need to keep it in front of your two eyes. Whatever Allah has given you, use it to seek the akhirah. My dear brothers and sisters, if you think about what Allah has given you from rizq, not just money, because not everyone is wealthy, but time, intelligence, skills that you have, uh, yani free time maybe you have that others don't have youth that you have strength that you have what Allah has given you use it to get Jannah you don't get Jannah because of your deeds you get Jannah because of Allah's mercy but use it as a means to get the mercy of Allah for Jannah and if Allah is always really sad to see any, a Muslim who Allah has given him for example wealth he doesn't use that wealth to get Jannah. Ajib, I mean, someone who was told Jannah will cost you 100,000. And he had the money and he didn't buy Jannah. Ajib. He had money, he didn't buy Jannah. The person who was told Jannah requires you to come and help in your local masjid. If you come and you help your local masjid, and you clean the masjid every day, for example, or you look after the affairs of the masjid every day, Jannah for it. And the person di couldn't, didn't want to give that time for Jannah. And a person has a skill set, for example, someone has a skill set, whatever it might be, certain skill, a certain uh, profession. 
in subhanallah the the member that you can see behind me in the background very vaguely you can see it on the camera in subhanallah a, a carpenter came to me from uh, syria yani allah bless him and keep him safe uh, he came to me and said to me i'm a I'm a carpenter. I can craft things out of out of wood, and I can make designs. Would you like me to make a member for the masjid? I said, I would love you to make a member for the masjid. He said, Would you be able to bring me the wood? I don't need anything else. Just if you can bring me the wood, I'll make you the for the masjid. And I, like this is my skill that I had in my country, and now he doesn't work, and he's because he he came here and to the UK as a and he from his country when, because of the difficulties that were there. But subhanAllah, a person just has a skill like that. He says, look, I don't know how to, to give a khutbah. I don't know how to teach people Quran. I don't know a lot of things other people know. Like, and I'm good with, I can make nice things out of wood. So would you like me to make something out of wood for the masjid? If Allah has given you something that you can use it to get the akhirah, use it to get the akhirah. What was Qarun told? You've been given wealth. Right? You are insanely rich. You're so rich that your keys yani, are more than the wealth of most of the people. Yani, your keys alone are... You've got a band of strong men to carry your keys. You're extremely rich. Why don't you use that money to get Jannah with it? If someone's very clever, for example, Ajib, they go and study in these famous universities and you know, they get their degrees and PhDs and everyone recognizes. Like in Yom, the person never used their brain for something for the religion of Islam. And from the cleverest of people, that person, the non-Muslims are desperate for them to come and join because this, is, this person is a genius. Yani we want them, we'll pay you any salary you want because we want to bring you in. Like never ever did that person even one day stop to think, could I use the skill that I have to get Jannah? Not just give up your salary. It's not haram for you to take a portion of this dunya. So they said to Qarun, we're not asking you to give all your money. We're not asking that person to give up your job. We're not asking you to cut your salary and, and take a, a tiny salary instead. We're not asking you to give up your job to be someone who comes and helps out in the masjid. We're just asking you to give a portion of what Allah has given you. And a portion for the dunya you can keep. And Islam never ever, walillahi alhamd, if you look at the reality of human beings, and from the mahasin of Islam, I want you to compare Islam to communism and, and, and the extreme forms of socialism. The belief that no one's allowed to be rich and everyone has to give all of their money to make everybody equal. Wallahi, no doubt it is a failure as a system. And it has been a failure any, from the beginning to the end. And the interesting thing is, why is it a failure? Because it's not in line with the fitra of Bani Adam and it's not just. The fitra of a person, I'm sorry if you have money, yani, the fitra is you want to enjoy the money you have, right? That's your nature. Yani. Why would I be working a really good job and getting a really good salary and I have to spread it all equally among yani, this Guy who doesn't get out of bed until 11 o'clock in the morning. How does that work? It's like these unfair taxes, the daraib, the unfair taxes that are put, that are not from Islam. And why, what am I paying for? I'm not talking about paying for things that benefit the people yet. For all of this like unfair and unjust systems like that, it, people's nafs doesn't take it. So Qarun was not told that. Qarun was told, that you're, not, you're allowed to have, you're allowed to be wealthy. You can be rich. But you have to give a portion of your money for the Dar al-Akhirah. And you have to give a portion in Zakat. There's poor people in Bani Israel. They don't have food. They don't have proper clothing. So why are you there with your palaces and your any, all those things? They said he got close to Fir'aun. And that's how he became wealthy. He became wealthy by having connections in the government. Yani. Fir'aun and his ministers. Yani. Just give a portion. Get, you're allowed to keep your dunya. Islam doesn't stop you being wealthy. Islam doesn't stop you earning a good salary. Islam doesn't stop you living in a nice house. 
But give a portion of what you've been given for the Akhirah. Use what you've been given. Yani, is that nice house taking you away from Allah or bringing you close to Allah? Maybe it's bringing you close to Allah. You say, Alhamdulillah, I've got a nice house. We bring people around for food. We look after our neighbors. We read the Quran. Yani, it's comfortable for us. We go to the masjid. Alhamdulillah, why? what's wrong with having that nice house? Like another person has a nice house, that house is taking you away from Allah. And it's far from the masjid, but you got it because it's really big and it's got like, it's very luxurious, but it's far from the masjid. It's making it hard for you to go. You are getting, you're not being committed. A lot of haram goes on there, breaking family ties, music and movies and all that stuff. For that, that isn't doing you good. Like if Allah has given you some wealth and that wealth is bringing you near to Allah, there's no harm in having your share of the dunya. You have your nasib, but give you others. And look at how beautiful the zakah is. Typically, zakah is 2.5%, right? Typically, zakah is 2.5%. Not in every situation, but typically. 2.5%, the person who pays it will never ever feel it a burden. For example, if you have a uh, 1,000 pounds, what are you being asked to, to give out of a thousand pounds? 25 pounds. A thousand pounds, you are being asked to give 25 pounds. 25 pounds is. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, one trip to a, a restaurant or a takeaway. And even then, that probably doesn't cover even maybe one person's trip or maybe maximum two people's trip. That's it. After a whole year, one whole year. From that thousand, you only have to give 25 pounds after a whole year. But what happens when all the Muslims in the world, and if you look at the wealthy Muslims in the world, so forget the Muslims, look at the wealthy people in the world. If they all just forget these, you know, insane taxes that the governments put on people, any that are huge, any people taking 50% of their income and any charging them for everything and just wasting it. If you now look, if just they said to the wealthy people, just take two and a half percent. We're just going to use it for the poor and the needy and the most important things in the society, the poor people, the needy people and whatever. Wallah, there would be more than enough to cover the, all of the poor people. The poor people would eat, they would be clothed and there wouldn't be resentment between rich and poor. And no poor person would look and say, you, I hate you for what you have. Because he knows like whatever you have, it's coming to me as well. And every time you earn a million, I get a nasib from that million as well. And you earn one million and I get a nasib from it. I get a share, it comes to me, the poor person, he gets some clothing, he gets some food, for he gets happy to see his brother wealthy. He says, Alhamdulillah, he's wealthy. That means, you know, he made some money this month. Inshallah, we, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, as poor people, we're going to get some, we're going to be taken care of by Allah's help. And that rich person doesn't have any issue with those people. Are oh, they taking all my money? And but the system of Islam is beautiful, wallahi. And when we turn away from it, it makes all of us poor. The rich get poor and the poor get poor and everybody is miserable. And the system of Islam is beautiful. Don't forget, you're allowed to have a share of the dunya. And be good to others as Allah was good to you. And where did you get this money from? Ya Qarun. It wasn't from your own efforts. You got it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How are you going to be yani, arrogant like that? You got it from Allah. So all Allah asks you is, as I have been good to you, be good to other people. When you see somebody is in need, give him some money. Didn't Allah give you money when you were in need? وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ وَلَا تَبَغِي الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Don't cause corruption on the earth. Allah does not love the people who cause corruption on the earth. Yani the worst thing you can do, it's not only now, you're not, it's not just you're not giving the zakah. It's not just that you are not helping anybody. It's not just that you are not trying to get Jannah. You're also using your money to cause problems for people on the earth. To purchase haram and do haram and spread haram. But this is a beautiful message to everyone that Allah has given you something you can use to help yourself and help the people.
ان الله لا يحب المفسدين قل انما قال قال, أوه. قال انما اوتيته على علم عندي أَوَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَهْلَكَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مَنْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُ قُوَّةً أَشَدُّ مِنْهُ قُوَّةً وَأَكْثَرُ جَمِيعًا يعني وأكثر جمعا I know you're tired, like in, uh, أَوَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَهْلَكَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مَنْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ قُوَّةً وَأَكْثَرُ جَمْعًا وَلَا يُسْأَلُ عَنْ ذُنُوبِهِمُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ He said, I was only given it because of knowledge I have. Did he not know that Allah had destroyed before him of generations those who were greater than him in power and greater in accumulation of wealth? But the criminals about their sins will not be asked. And I was only given it because of knowledge I have. Look at what he does. He rejects the blessing. He said, this is not from Allah. I say, how, how can you say this from Allah? This is from my hard work. I'm clever and I'm, you know, I know how to make money and I'm wealthy because of my own efforts. Does he not know that Allah destroyed people that were superior to him? Yani they had more strength and more money. Akhtaru jam'a, yani they had more money than him and more strength than him. Now what does it mean? Wala yus'alu an dhunubihim al Here, uh, there, is a, there are different views about it. Because taban, there are ayat that mention people being asked about their sins. And there are ayat that mention people not being asked. For here, there are uh, two views about it that I'm going to mention to you. There's more, but I'm going to mention two to, to you. One is they will not be asked because their situation is so clear in how evil they were that they can be thrown into Jahannam. There's no need to examine, do you have any good deeds? Okay, let's weigh your good deeds and bad. Is one of them more than the other? No, there's no need because this person is a mujrim and is a criminal, their deeds are obvious. And there's another view that what it means is that Allah has no need to ask them because he has already recorded it. And he, Allah doesn't need to ask them, tell me what did you do on that day? Tell me what did you do on this day? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already recorded it perfectly. For the person can be punished by being asked about their sins. Yani, didn't you do this? Didn't you do that? They can be punished. They can be punished for it. But they don't need to, information doesn't need to come from them. Because Allah has already written that in everything that that person uh, will do. فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فِي زِينَتِهِ قَالَ الَّذِينَ يُرِيدُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا يَا لَيْتَ لَنَا مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَ قَارُونَ ما أوتي قارون إنه لذو حظ عظيم. So he came out before his people in his adornment. Those who desired the worldly life said, Oh, would that we had liked what was given to Qarun. Indeed, he is the one of the great fortune. Now, miss, very much people are, are like that today. In fact, probably you can, you know, you can identify with this 100% that when they saw Qarun in his finery, and he, the people who wanted the dunya, what did they say? Oh, I wish I could be this person. How many people today, they look at these kuffar. I'm not talking about the Muslims. They look at the, they look at the kuffar who are wealthy, these billionaires and famous businessmen and famous celebrities. What do they say? I just wish I could be that person. I would give anything to be that person. And that's a sign of someone who, who is weak in iman and who doesn't appreciate the iman, that the, 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 the Islam that they've been given. And that a person turns and says, I wish I could be like this person. I wish, you know, I just, they want to copy every celebrity, every wealthy person, every, any rich businessman. They just dream of being like them every day. For that is the state of the people who don't know the dunya and don't know the akhirah in reality. And those people if they are saved from the punishment, as these people were saved from the punishment. 
it's only then that they realize how wrong they were to wish to be like those people. Now, there's no point in saying, there's no, there no harm in a person saying, I, you know, I would wish that Allah Azzawajal would provide me enough for me to give sadaqah and to be able to help people. Like to, to wish to be like a disbeliever because of the wealth that they have, I, I mean, that's a, that's a very, very dangerous uh, place to be. But that's where a lot of people are. That's why we have a celebrity culture. That's why we have a culture of any you know, people, you know, want to copy the way these people dress. They want to copy the way. And the people of Ben Israel were no different. And I wish we could have that clothes that Harun has got, and that uh, Karun has got. I wish I could have the clothing that Karun has got. I wish I could have the, I need the finery. I wish I could have the palace. I wish I could have. And just craving to be like them. Like he's a mujrim. He's a criminal. Why would you want to be like him? وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ وَيْلَكُمْ وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ وَيْلَكُمْ ثَوَابُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لِمَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَلَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الصَّابِرُونَ But those who had been given knowledge said, Woe to you! The reward of Allah is better for he who believes and does righteousness and none are granted it except the patient. Any people of knowledge were not fooled. The people of knowledge, they said, How, what's the matter with you? What are you saying? Any, you, you, the reward of Allah is better for you. Why do you want to be like this person? Well, like this, there are Muslims today born in Islam who if someone offered them to be one of these super wealthy, super famous people, and leave your religion, they would take it without blinking an eye. They would take it. Yeah, I'll take it. Because they want the dunya, not the akhirah. For those people, the adab is close to them, and if, if Allah saves them, it's, it's a very close thing. It's a something that is, the punishment is very close. The people of knowledge, they knew. They said, how can you want to be like a person like that? Hatta even tamanni, yani, uh, even wishing to be a fasiq is the same thing. Yani it comes less than wishing to be a kafir. Like in wishing to be a fasiq, you see a Muslim who is a fasiq, but he's famous or he's wealthy. And he's very famous or he's very wealthy. Yani. But he's a fasiq, yani, openly. Yani. He does haram left, right and center. How can you wish to be like him? The people of knowledge don't wish to be like that. They know that the reward of Allah is far, far better. And that... The people who will get it are those who are patient. Any patient in regards to what any they, they do good deeds and, and they are patient with regards to what Allah has decreed for them. Maybe Allah has not decreed for them to be wealthy, but Allah they are patient with what Allah has decreed for them now. فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَالِهِ الْأَرْضَ فَمَا كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ فِئَةٍ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ فِئَةٍ فِئَةٍ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُتَصِرِينَ And we caused the earth to swallow him and his home. And there was for him no company to aid him other than Allah, nor was he of those who could defend themselves. Now, he had uh, the punishment of uh, Al Khasf. The earth opened up a big, you know, chasm in the earth and swallowed him and swallowed his home and swallowed his wealth into the core of the earth. Where is Qarun? And he, like the poet said, فَأَيْنَمَا هَذَا قَارُونُ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ Where is all the gold that Qarun gathered together? Allah Azza wa Jal swallowed all of it into the earth. He caused the earth to open up and swallow up Qarun and his home and all of his wealth. وَأَصْبَحَ الَّذِينَ تَمُنُّوا تَمَنَّوا وَأَصْبَحَ الَّذِينَ تَمَنُّوا مَكَانَ تمن... عفوا تمنوا تمنوا بالفتح 
وأصبح الذين تمنوا مكانه بالأمس يقولون يقولون ويك أن الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء من عباده ويقدر لولا أمن الله علينا لخسف بنا ويك أن ويك أن ويك أن ويك أن ويك أنه لا يفلح الكافرون And those who had wished for the for his position the previous day began to say, Oh, how Allah extends provision to whom he wills of his servants and restricts it. If not that Allah had conferred favor on us, he would have caused it to swallow us. Oh, how the disbelievers do not succeed. In the people who wished to be him the day before, they realized the reality of it. That's like those people who wish to be any famous people or any wealthy people. And then they read that person's going through you know, suicidal tendencies and terrible things going on. And then they say, oh, I made a mistake. I should not have wished to be that person. For when they saw the punishment come and the earth open up and swallow him, they realized that actually we should have recognized that Allah gives wealth to who he wants and takes it from who he wants. And if it wasn't for Allah's blessing upon us, he would have actually made us with Qarun and we would have been swallowed up with him. تلك الدار الآخرة نجعلها للذين لا يريدون علوا في الأرض ولا فسادا والعاقبة للمتقين That home of the hereafter we assign to those who do not desire exaltedness exaltedness now. exaltedness upon the earth or corruption and the best outcome is for the righteous and who will get the who will get Jannah Jannah will be for the people who don't, they don't have arrogance and pride and tyranny and corruption on the earth. And the final outcome, the final result will be for the people of taqwa. Uh, as a fa'idah, it said that uh, when uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz died, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, that... Uh, he had his servant was looking after him and his wife had left to, to tend to something from the family. So she said to the servant, just watch him. He's, uh, you know, he's not, he's been, he's unwell. Just keep an eye on him while I go. When she came back, she saw the servant outside. And she said to him that I told you to stay inside and look after him. He said, no, he commanded me to leave. He said, I see what you do not see. And he said that I heard after that being recited this ayah. And I heard that from the inside and when he died, I heard it being recited. That this is the akhirah. We give it to the people who don't want to be tyrants on the earth and they don't want to cause corruption and the end result will be for the people of At-Taqwa. Man jaa'a bil hasanati falahu khayrun minha wa man jaa'a bil sayyiati fala yujaza' وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَلَا يُجَزَ الَّذِينَ عَمِلُوا السَّيِّئَاتِ إِلَّا مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Whoever comes on the day of, on the day of judgment with a good deed will have better than it. And whoever comes with an evil deed and those who did evil deeds will not be recompensed except as much as what they used to do. نعم. And that's the, the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. And what an excellent promise it is. If you do good, we'll give you better than the good that you did. And if you do evil, we will only give you equal to what the evil is. Or less than that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives it. In other words, the evil will never exceed what you've done. Never will you get more than what you've done. And that shows that whatever punishments take place is just jaza and wifaqa. It's a just punishment. But if you did good, we'll give you more than the good that you did. 
Innalladhina farada alaykal qur'ana laraduka ila ma'ad Qul rabbi a'lamu man jaa'a bil huda wa man huwa fi dalalin mubin Indeed O Muhammad he who imposed upon you the Quran will take you back to a place of return Say, my Lord is most knowing of who brings guidance as who is in clear error. They say that the ma'ad here is either Makkah and your Lord will return you back to Makkah in a state of victory or that it is the Jannah, that Allah will return you to Jannah. And the one who has imposed the Qur'an and ordained the Qur'an, ordered you to act on its laws, told you to preach it to others, will either bring you back to Makkah in this life or will bring you back to paradise in the next. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَرْجُوا أَنْ يُلْقَى إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابُ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ ظَهِيرًا لِلْكَافِرِينَ And you were not expecting that the book would be, would be conveyed to you. But it is a mercy from your Lord, so do not be an assistant to the disbelievers. And you don't help them, don't help them in their disbelief by agreeing to their concessions, by you know, uh, supporting them, by allowing them. And you don't support the disbelievers, and that's very important. The Muslim never ever does the Muslim support or assist the disbelievers in their disbelief. وَلَا يَصُدَّنَّكَ One more time. وَلَا يَصُدَّنَّكَ عَنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ بَعْدَ إِذْ أُنزِلَتْ إِلَيْكَ وَدْعُ إِلَى رَبِّكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And never let them avert you from the verse of Allah after they had been revealed to you. And invite people to your Lord and never be of those who associate others with Allah. And you don't let them take you away from it. And for example, by compromising in your religion, and you don't allow them to take you away from the revelation of Allah after it's been sent down to you. Rather, what your job is to do with these people, the kuffar, is not to aid them or assist them or compromise with them, but to call them to Allah, to call them to tawheed and never be from those who make shirk with Allah. وَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٌ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجَهَةٌ لَهُ الْحُكْمُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And do not invoke with Allah another deity. There is no deity except Him. Everything will be destroyed except His face. His is the judgment, and to him you'll be returned. Uh, the last ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal commands not to make dua besides al- to anyone other than Allah. La ilaha illahu, there is no God worthy of worship but him. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, Kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha. And he, everything will be destroyed except his face. And here, uh, it's, I, don't, I don't like uh, that in the clear Qur'an it says nothing will perish except he himself brackets his face. Now, it should be the other way around. Because Allah said nothing will, be, nothing will perish except his face. And, he, and here the face is the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the sifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what they call expressing part of something as an evidence for all of it. I think that's what they call it. Yani bringing part of something as an evidence for all of it. For example, in the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَارْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Make ruku' with the people in ruku' Does that mean you go and just make ruku' and then leave the salah? Or it means you pray the whole salah? But Allah said make ruku' He didn't say make ruku' and sujood and takbir and taslim and tashahud. Any abbara, any bil ba'di. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal expressed a part of that salah, meaning the whole of it. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing from him and his names and attributes will be 
destroyed. But Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned any from the great attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his face. So the himself as a meaning is fine in brackets. Any it should I would have put in brackets and by extension, comma, himself. But you should not take away the, the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal said, Wajhahu here. He didn't say, that's why when we say, you didn't translate it as pray with the people who prayed. You said, make ruku' at the people who made ruku'. So I, don't, I think it's, it's a mistake to say everything will perish except himself because you took away from what Allah actually said. Everything will perish except his face, brackets, and by extension, himself. And therefore himself. Something like that. Um, and even I don't like I don't like Sahih International put I.E. except himself because they made that the face means that the face doesn't mean face here it means him and that's not that's not correct the best is Muhsin Khan here everything will perish save his face like, and it would be better if there was a bracket there to say and therefore in himself or and by extension himself um, all authority belongs to him and to him you will all be returned Every single thing that Allah Jal created will perish. I can hear a question, and we'll finish with this question. What about Jannah? Jahannam, the believers in the Akhirah. We say they'll live forever, right? The Aqid of Ahl Sunnah, Jannah will remain forever. For they say here that the reason Jannah remains forever is because Allah decrees, Allah is sustaining it, Allah is keeping it going. Otherwise, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for Jannah not to keep going, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to survive. Eh? Jannah only stays, people only stay alive in Jannah because Allah sustains them. Al-Qayyum. Um, like in people, those people, every single one of them tasted death. In every creation of Allah tasted yani, death and any destruction. Like in what remains forever is the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram and by extension himself and his names and attributes in all of it remains forever subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever Allah wills to remain forever that is from the will of Allah that's from Allah's power over it it's not istiqlal and it doesn't remain forever and you don't live in Jannah forever by yourself you live in Jannah because Allah keeps you alive كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه. نعم. To him is every single command and authority, and rulership and legislation, and to him you'll be returned. And that brings us to the end of the surah. ونكتفي بهذا بإذن الله تعالى. Suffice ourselves with that. هذا والله عالم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين.